You're absolutely right. You are right. I agree. Happy Wednesday, everyone. So back in 1992, when I was still in Menudo, James Carville famously gave the Clinton presidential campaign some advice. It's the economy, stupid. When he should have said, it's the dry cleaning, stupid. Uh. But this year, it's the safety, stupid, which is something someone should have said to Alec Baldwin. <laughs> but from the border to our dis disintegrating cities, America's feeling of safety and security is falling faster than a door from a 737 MAX. <laughs> and that means another lefty sacred cow has failed. It's the progressive chestnut that the cops are the enemy, not the perps. Turns out there are bad guys out there, which is why we have prisons and we have cops. But that basic truth was obliterated and replaced with an extreme opposite. Our police was not only racist, but also irrelevant, a conclusion exaggerated to wild extremes by the George Floyd propagandists. Remember the fall of Minneapolis documentary, which suggested that much of the narrative around Floyd's death was just that, a narrative? We should have seen it coming. Well, we did, but if we spoke about it, we'd be called racist. But now the myth, we hope, is starting to unravel. So let's turn to the story of Roland Fryer, a renowned black economics professor at Harvard. In 2016, he published an extensive study which sought to explore racial differences in police use of force. And he collected data from all over, including New York, Dallas, Houston, LA, and Florida. Here he is last week discussing those findings. We collected millions of observations on uh, everyday use of force that wasn't lethal. We collected thousands of observations on lethal force. And it, it was in this moment, 2016, that I realized people lose their minds when they don't like the result. Yes, we saw some bias in the low-level uses of force, every day pushing up against cars and things like that. People tend to like that result. But we didn't find any um, uh, racial bias in police shootings. So to his surprise, he found no racial bias in police shootings. But despite those millions of observations and data points, that was an inconvenient truth that people just couldn't handle. I had colleagues take me into to the side and say, don't publish this. You'll ruin your career. Mm. I said, what are you talking about? I said, what's wrong with it? Do you believe the first part? Yes. Do you believe the second part? Well, it's the issue is they just don't fit together. I said to them, if the second part uh, showed bias, do you think I would, should publish it then? And they said, yeah, then it would make sense. And I said, I guarantee you I'll publish it. Well, someone's going to be sitting alone in the school cafeteria. <laughs> so he was told not to publish it because it didn't fit the narrative. But good for him, he did it anyway. And the backlash was so bad, he says he had to have police protection for 40 days, all because he told the truth. And a few years later, in 2019, came the fallout. He was suspended for two years, and his lab shut down after being accused of verbal sexual misconduct and fostering a hostile work environment, which he denies. And the person who handed out that suspension? The dean of faculty at the time, Claudine Gay. Yeah, you know, the woman who would go on to become Harvard's president, but then resigned after she failed to condemn anti-Semitism on campus, and that she also plagiarized tons of her own academic work, as well as ripping off Urkel. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in a beautiful moment, Fryer was asked about Claudine Gay last week. Claudine Gay. She said this in a letter to the economics department at the time. Professor Fryer exhibited a pattern of behavior that failed to meet the expectations of conduct within our community and was harmful to the well-being of its members. The totality of these behaviors is a clear violation of institutional norms and a betrayal of trust of the Harvard community. So I guess I want to ask, do you believe in karma? I hear it's a mother <laughs> You no, know, we bleep that, but for those of you at home, it's a term that means people who have sex with their moms. <laughs> or as the left calls it, maternal attracted persons. 
So maybe with Gay's downfall, he gets the last laugh, but not before his career gets derailed and his reputation trashed. And let's not forget that, that by bearing a guy like Fryer, the message was clear. Do not f with the narrative or you will be destroyed. And so the myth that all cops were racist killers of black men could continue, and more people, most of whom are minorities that the police protect, would die. But this denial of the truth on public safety still rages on. In Kansas City, after the shooting at the Super Bowl celebration that resulted in the death of a young mother and the wounding of 22 others, Kansas City's mayor, Quinton Lucas, was more pissed off about the governor using the word thugs to describe the shooters. It was a racist dog whistle, which makes no sense. If it were a dog whistle, we would have seen these ladies come a running. <laughs> Terrible! No, you stop it! Stop it. But really, it can't be a dog whistle if all of us can hear it. And it says something about the mayor of a city where dozens of people are shot who is more concerned about the feelings of the shooter and the words used to describe them. No wonder our cities are more dangerous than carpooling with Tiger Woods. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Meanwhile, outside Boston, officials at a high school have asked for the National Guard to be deployed to control school violence. That way, teachers can devote more time to banging their students. <laughs> but you could bet most of those teachers are the same people who were calling Trump racist when he was talking about putting the National Guard at the border. In Chicago, the crime is so bad that bullets are now an optional topping on their deep dish pizza. <laughs> but now the migrants have joined in, with four of them arrested for robbing and strangling a man on a train. If only they were wearing MAGA hats, the other networks would cover it. And here in New York, the safest big city in America, according to Mayor Adams and DA Alvin Bragg, subway crime is up 22% for the year. And a record number of NYPD cops were hurt on the job last year, with 1,200 of them injured in struggles with suspects in the last three months alone. So thanks to a phony narrative run amok, it's now a physical war on the cops themselves. From a gang of migrants attacking two NYPD officers in Times Square, to illegals attacking cops in shelters. These scumbags haven't been in our country for five minutes, and they're already acting like Democrats. <laughs> and so, as the NYPD reports a new record number of cops injured on the job, no wonder cops are resigning at also a record-breaking pace. Of course, in a year, the Democrats will brag incessantly about the dramatic decline in injured police. But upon closer inspection, it's because there's no cops left to injure. Here he is. Let's welcome tonight's guest. He knows the quickest way to a man's heart. Angioplasty, chef and restaurateur Andrew Grohl. She's known for her sports and her spunky reports. Outkick host Charlie Arnold. Ladders avoid walking under her for bad luck. New York Times bestselling author and Fox News contributor Cat Tiff. And his rings are on loan from Saturn. New York Times bestselling author, comedian, and former NWA world champion Tyrus. <laughs> Tyrus, I go to you first for no reason at all. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I, I go to you for one reason mainly because two. I think you have two reasons. Yeah. Uh, um, I think you have something in common with this guy Fryer because you have to tell you have to say the truth, even though you know that if you if you go in another direction, it would be safer for you. Monetarily wise, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sleeping would suck. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's take color out of it, which mm -hmm. is hard to do if you're. If you're a parrot, because America, we've come down to two, two things. We're either a truth seeker, and that's hard, mm -hmm. because it takes a lot of work. It takes time. You have to investigate everything. Everybody tells you something. You have to say, oh, okay, that's cool, and, you put, and you'll research it and back it up. And then when you get all your information together, then you'll have an informed, educated response. You'll be like, well, actually, it's bad people who are making bad mistakes with police officers, not necessarily a certain skin tone. Exactly. But... That's the, the truth seeker. He's a truth seeker, and he's fine with the fact that he's going to lose. He's not black anymore. He's Uncle Tom. He's all this. But what he really is, is again, is a truth teller. Because what we have become are parrots. 
And parrots can't stand truth tellers because what a parrot does, it, it just mimics what it sees mm. and what it's told. So when I see a headline, police kill black people, oh, police kill black people, rah, police kill black people. <laughs> and it's so easy because now there are all the excuses in my life and everything. It's not my fault. I'm not responsible for my bad behavior. I just step out of the house and these racist cops will come get me. So I'm special. I'm endangered. So I don't need to improve. So that's the that's the real thing is whether he's a truth seeker. I wanted to be a truth seeker. I never cared. I gave a I never gave a damn. No other man's going to tell me what color I am. Mm -hmm. You have to be a big <laughs> man. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm just but that's the problem. And with social media, with the TikToks, with politicians today, whatever, they just want parrots. And that's what we become. So to be a truth seeker, you got to do your homework. Yeah. And right now we are just, we are, we've got, you would think we're the Caribbean. There's so many parrots in this country. <laughs> There's so many parrots on TV. So stop being a parrot. Someone tells you something happens, investigate it. That's what he did. It took a long time. The truth came out. And lo and behold, turns out human beings are awful. <laughs> it's true. It, well done. Andrew, I love this story because we, ne we rarely get karma. But the fact that Claudine Gay was the one that totally screwed him over and then she loses her job, I think they should make him the new dean. Oh, I like that. That'd it. be amazing. I love it. Well, isn't it funny that Claudine Gay is behind everything? It's like in a Scooby Doo episode <laughs> when they pull the mask off and it's like, it's Claudine Gay again. And, and by the way, thank you. I thought you were going to ask me how to cook parrot. So um, <laughs> actually, really. Can people eat parrot? I, you know what? People eat they everything. They should. Yeah. People eat, people eat everything. <laughs> a lot of bones, a lot of bones. But the thing is, is that let's let's zoom out on this conversation and actually take race out of it and apply what we're seeing to every single conversation in America. We are in, an, you know, you think about gaslighting and it's the first sign of a domestic abuser. We're in an abusive relationship with the media government complex in America. They're abusing us with their gaslighting. And then you have the parrots or the stupid people. And stupidity now is defined as somebody who sees it in real life in front of them, but yet they still believe the lie. Mm -hmm. So you gotta do your own research and you've gotta actually come up with your own conclusions. Stop being gaslit. Because if everybody tells you that foam on food tastes good, everybody's going around in New York and they're like, I love foam. Well, it tastes like aerated grease and chemical cleaner. Yes. So, you know, that's, uh, that's my culinary element. I never understood the whole foam trend. They put like, it's like, it's not a sauce. No. It's just something, I feel like I'm eating shaving foam. It's, di it's Bidenomics, <laughs> they're selling you air. Yes, exactly. It's just the effect of it all, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, Charlie, have you ever assumed a certain position and then you read and you go, oh my God, I'm wrong? And if so, doesn't it feel kind of good? When you say assume a position, I feel like my whole life I grew up not recognizing race. I was always friends with different types of people. I played sports my entire life, had teammates of all different walks of life. I never saw skin color. You were just my teammate. You were my friend. And even in sports now, when you're reading some of the headlines, like Gerard Mayo, he's the new head coach of the Patriots, he says if you can't see color then you have a problem. Uh, but then you look at the flip side with crime, you're not allowed to see color. Like for example, uh, we talked about the crime in New York City. There was recently um, a suspect who made an attack on a man mm -hmm. on one of the subway platforms and you could clearly see his face. Mm -hmm. He had no mask on, he was caught on surveillance camera, yet there was a description on the Crime Stoppers website underneath the picture where you could clearly see his skin color and it says the suspect described as a man 40 to 50 with a medium build and a beard. No mention yeah. of his race, which would probably negate a lot of other suspects, but they still, they felt so, you know, intent on not putting the race in there because they didn't want to come off as racist that the NYPD effectively can't even do their job. So we have a real problem on our hands. I always wonder if I become a suspect, what will the approximate height be? <laughs> uh, I would imagine three foot five to four foot six, <laughs> 70 to 95 pounds soaking up. <laughs> <laughs> Probably hiding in a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> Kat, don't, I just, I love this story that Claudine Gay was the one behind this. It's basically ruined the guy's life and now she's gone. That still, to me, is the real beauty of this. What say you, Tim? Well, I just think in general, uh, I think it's really sad, and part of the reason we can never get things solved is because if there's ever a problem, there's two sides, mm -hmm. and then 
you go even further in in your own side instead of actually looking at statistics for what they are, looking at the problem for what it is, maybe working together because Criminal justice reform is something that I've always had an interest in. And there's a lot of legitimate discussions that can be had about accountability for police, about nonviolent crime, uh, victimless crimes, about um, making sure people are informed of what their rights are in, a, in, a, in an interaction with a police officer. Of course, what happened, instead of having any sort of conversation about those things, it became all cops are, are bad, and you had to go this. And so we missed this opportunity where now we're, I think, see, gonna see the pendulum. I've been saying this for years since, since 2020, truly, swing in the other direction where we are gonna have people who are calling in for, I, I worry, draconian measures in, in terms of this. And I think that no real human being feels that way. I think every human being understands that they like to be able to feel safe on the subway, for example. and. Just the traffic in this city alone, it's a lot worse than it used to be. And I think that alone kind of tells me what I hear from a lot of people is they don't feel safe on the train. I think that I it's, it's, it's really sad that to just demand partisan purity, um, it, it keeps us from solving problems. And I think we're going to see this happening. And, and we are seeing this happening in a lot more areas than just this one, unfortunately. And it's hurt people like me who go on the subway to make people uncomfortable. <laughs> There's nobody there for me to just awkwardly stare at. Well, they just got to look down. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.